topic of my talk is the Orbital Express Satellite Servicing Program. Uh, what this is, is it's a um, contract from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, the uh, people who uh, really invented the internet, Kurt uh, Rickens jokes about uh, Lord notwithstanding. Um, and um, the NASA has also kicked in some money, and Boeing is kicking in some of its own money. And uh, the uh, Boeing is the prime contractor. I'm an engineer there um, in Huntington Beach, California, which is where the program is being run out of. Uh, and as you'll see later on in the presentation, uh, there are a number of uh, prime uh, subcontractors. Uh, basically, what Orbital Express is, is a system of robotically re servicing and upgrading and refueling satellites on orbit, robotically and autonomously. Um, and the basic elements of this are uh, the, uh, there's, there's really three basic elements. And the first is the satellite you see in the foreground is the servicing satellite. And it has a robotic arm. And it's called, um, I think it's called Autonomous Space Transport and Robotic Orbiter, or ASTRO, like George Jetson's dog. And uh, the satellite in the background, uh, we call it the next sat uh, because it's the uh, next generation of satellites which can be designed to be serviced. And uh, a little bit about how that will be done will come up in a minute. But what you see in the slide is actually the demonstration version. Um, operational satellites will be larger. And of course, the, uh, the next sat in the background is basically kind of a target vehicle, kind of in the spirit of the old Atlas and Gina, where, where the purpose is, uh, hold your comment over later, uh, where the purpose is to prove that you can do it uh, and later on in the transition to actual operating satellites. But this is just a demo version. This is uh, a kind of a, an animation here, or a slide from the animation. But this is a real program. This is not a paper study. The Astro vehicle is being built even as we speak in Huntington Beach. Um, and it's slated for launch in 2006, in September, on Annapolis. And it's actually going to be made to the next set surrogate client. And basically, the next set really, in the demo, will serve two roles. It will serve the role of the client satellite that's going to be repaired. And it's going to serve in the role of the commodity spacecraft that actually delivers the spare parts and fuel to the Astro to take to the client. In, in, in the demo, one kind of target satellite will satisfy both roles. They'll be launch mated, and then they'll separate and do various scenarios, which I'll get into in a minute. The next slide, um, funny thing about this presentation, I actually convinced myself, looking at it on the plane, that the whole thing would be make more sense backwards. Um, but I don't want to do that now. Uh, this, we see this as part of an overall space architecture where there might be an entire system of space servicing elements, um, tr advanced transportation elements like advanced launch systems, orbital transfer vehicles that go from orbit to orbit, and so on. But the basic idea of Orbital Express is suppose you have various orbits, a polar, low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit. For each orbit or set of closely related orbits, closely related in energy, you might have a dedicated fleet of astro spacecraft serving clients in that orbit. And so we, we envision this starting out with military clients, because DARPA was the original funding source, and eventually transitioning to some of the NASA clients. And eventually, once it's proven, um, possibly commercial clients as well. Uh, let's see the next slide. Uh, basically, the re what we're trying to do here, uh, when we talk about servicing, we're talking about two things. One is refueling. And what that mostly does, is from, the th from the military point of view especially, is maneuvering on demand, increasing maneuverability, because maneuvering out of your predetermined orbit takes fuel. You use it up too quickly, you need more. So refueling increases maneuverability which means you can kind of tweak your orbit around once you're in space. And that way, if, you're, kind of, if you're, you're observing a certain area where you think a potential enemy might have some activity, and they know that what your satellite schedule is, they can plan their activities <coughs> around that. But this way, you can fool them. You can come over when they least expect it. The other thing is, of course, that you can increase uh, mass launch margins. In other words, you, most satellites are launched with enough propellant so that to station keep and to dispose at the end of the lifetime. But you can leave, with Orbital Express, you can leave that out. 
and you use up your whole payload capability of your launch vehicle for actual operational payload, and you don't have to take your deorbit fuel with you, you can tank up later toward the end of the mission. Now, as far as changing components, basically three things um, that um, we can do there. Uh, one is we can upgrade. Um, that is, a lot of the military satellites have 5, 10, 20 year lifetimes, but the technology, the electronics for things like imaging systems are likely to change drastically within the lifetime of the satellite. So, you know, something that's yay big um, is obsolete, and as a result, a satellite half the size of this room or bigger um, is obsolete. It, you'd be ashamed to have to launch a whole new satellite. But if you have a certain critical mass of clients that can be upgraded, it may be more economical to upgrade than to launch a new satellite. Uh, the other thing is uh, reconfiguring for changing mission needs um, sort of is, is in the spirit of the upgrade in that um, you've got a component that works, but you want it to do something different, something better. And then the third thing that uh, left out is the possibility uh, um, although less of a possibility of those, of repairing something that fails. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, okay, uh, the, what we're going to do in the demo is demonstrate these key technologies for, uh, to take the risks out so we can eventually transition to an operational system. Uh, again, autonomy, full autonomy, rendezvous and proximity operations, which is basically flying in formation with a client, hovering around it to inspect it and so on. Uh, soft capture and mating, uh, transferring fluid such as propellant or pressurant gases, transferring what we call them orbital replacement units or ORUs, which are components that are designed in a plug and play fashion. Uh, and the robot arm is going to have two roles. One is to remove the component, the old component from the client and put in the new one. And the other is, as a backup to the docking system, which basically happens by itself, the robot arm can actually grab the client and berth it with the servicing satellite, because they must be docked in order for servicing to take place, so all the fluid connectors can make. Um, ground infrastructure, which is basically perhaps a dedicated, eventually maybe a dedicated facility uh, for servicing. Um, and as I said, um, we're building two demo satellites. Boeing is building the Astro. Ball Aerospace in Colorado is building the next sat, which demonstrates that different vendors can work to a common set of interface specifications. And by the way, the interfaces, the docking and the, the fluid connectors and the ORU, the, the points where they plug in and mate, all that's going to be non-proprietary so that commercial clients will be able to build according to the non-proprietary <coughs> specs and they'll be able to you know, be serviced if they so desire. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Um, this kind of this is why I think this this slide series actually is kind of backwards. Uh, we're we're going to demonstrate is hydrogen monopropellant, mono which means it doesn't have liquid oxygen or something. It's just all by itself, and he uses a catalyst to kind of self ignite. And then we have a transition plan to eventually go to more different kinds of propellants in an operational system. And uh, component transfer, we're going to demonstrate a battery and a, a computer, a processor, being changed out and actually functioning. And eventually, you can, um, you can basically change out any kind of components you want. But that's what we're going to demonstrate. Uh, the, also, what you kind of get out of this is the basics of what you need for on-orbit assembly for the uh, exploration initiative, the vision for space exploration um, that was discussed this morning. Um, you may need to build some large structures, and this lays the groundwork for that. Um, and collateral services, inspection, you have the ability to fly around and take pictures of the client to check for damage. Cleaning, like cleaning dust, off, you know, well, debris off uh, solar arrays or optics or whatever. Um, there's a case, I think one of the TDRA satellites has a thermal blanket or something that fell over a lens uh, or an antenna. You can actually lift it off. Um, you get the idea. Next slide. And I think we're doing OK. Uh, so the idea is we start out with this demo. We learn what we need to, for the demo. We transition to the operational system. Next slide. Uh, just some of the technologies is almost an eye chart <laughs> for the uh, for the rendezvous and, and docking. We have visual cameras, infrared cameras, spotlight, various different kinds of sensors, and there's a retroreflective 
uh, target on the client satellite that bounces the infrared back so that it, it can detect it. However, we do have the capability to dock without any cooperation or reflectivity from the client. The, the Astro is smart enough to do it by itself. So that's the uh, important thing to, to get from this slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, basically, we're going to back out. They're going to be launch mated, and then they're going to back away. This says as far as 200 kilometers. I've seen 1,000 kilometers talked about. I don't know if that's still planned. But various, we're going to have something like 25 different scenarios of backing away, remating, transferring components. I think somehow in those 25 scenarios, we're going to transfer fluid 40 times or something like that. Uh, and this is going to go on over a period of six months starting a year from September. Uh, again, autonomous running and docking, uh, they'll be able to station keep that as formation fly as little as 10 centimeters apart, all done autonomously. Now initially it won't be fully autonomous. We have all these kind of whole points where it holds and waits for ground approval authority to proceed and then go, does the next step. But as we do each scenario and get more confidence in the autonomy, uh, we, it's going to be more, the demo will get more autonomous as the months go on. Next slide. Um, this is basically the initial mission scenario. Launch, check out, perform the first fluid transfers. Separation ring is kind of a little annoyance that you have to do for launch. This is sort of a simulation of how they rendezvous with each other. Uh, this is um, another, uh, or how they fly around each other. Uh, this is the rendezvous from seen from the point of view of the client. The servicer, the astro, kind of loops its way here. What it really is, is it's in an orbit with a slightly lower apogee, but, or slightly lower perigee. When it gets to the apogee, it does a burn to slowly raise its orbit up. And that's what you see. That's how the running is done. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a list of the 25 scenarios. Uh, the last five have not been determined. We can actually upload instructions from the ground. Again, robotics has two roles soft capture and ORU transfer. Next slide. Um, I think the program managers are going to have a little problem with that last bullet. Um, I think that should say cost effective alternative for program managers <laughs> so that they can plan more flexibility into their missions. Maybe I'll make a note to change that. Um, I don't know if I, uh, actually, let's see the movie. We have, the movie's eight and a half minutes. We have 12 minutes left. And if the movie doesn't answer any questions you might have, Maybe maybe might have time for one or two. Can we go to full screen mode? I think it's sharp enough. This will be right. This is okay. This okay. We don't need it. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, this image is a little smaller. Can you click on this, please? Just, just let go of the mouse. this thing.
Does this help? Donald Detweiler Robotics, Northrop Grumman Space Technology, and the Draper Laboratory. The demonstrations involve two vehicles, the Astro Servicing Vehicle, which is a prototype of future autonomous servicers, and the NextSat Vehicle, which represents a next-generation client satellite. In the flight experiments, NextSat will also function as a commodities resupply platform. To demonstrate the full range of needed capabilities, a series of progressively more complex separation, rendezvous, and capture scenarios will be executed. A variety of propellant and hardware transfers will be performed. In a typical test scenario, we will demonstrate autonomous rendezvous from ranges of hundreds of kilometers to close proximity operations and capture without the need for intervention from the ground. This high-fidelity closed-loop simulation has been dramatically accelerated in time. Astro's onboard visible spectrum cameras automatically acquire and track the next sat client vehicle against a background of stars. Astro's onboard navigation software simultaneously computes relative positions and velocities. Thruster firings are continuously controlled and optimized by onboard autonomous guidance software. As Astro approaches, its laser rangefinder provides accurate relative range information, improving the navigation solution. During night operations, an infrared sensor provides continuous situational awareness. The advanced video guidance sensor was developed under funding from NASA's Space Launch Initiative. AVGS uses its own lasers and retro reflector targets to provide relative position and attitude for a precise approach and soft capture. Astro incorporates standard interfaces for capture and mating and for fluid and component transfer. This allows Astro to mate with and service client vehicles built by any vendor. Astro's capture system employs three articulated arms to grapple the next sat. As the Astro vehicle approaches, both vehicles fly in formation, enabling the capture system arms to gently engage the NextSat's passive capture interface. This is known as a soft capture. This establishes the necessary relative alignment of the two vehicles, and then latches them together in their mated configuration. Electrical and fluid connections between the two spacecraft are automatically established. This system has been tested throughout a capture envelope comprising hundreds of simulated cases representing varying degrees of linear and angular position and rate mismatch. Based on this assessment, the docking system will function properly in all of the cases within the capture envelope. Once capture is complete, the Astro vehicle maintains attitude control of the mated vehicles. The Astro spacecraft is also capable of berthing with the next sat vehicle using its robotic arm instead of capturing while station keeping. This method allows for standoff initial positioning with additional margin for contamination and collision avoidance. Fluid transfer will also be demonstrated in the mated configuration. The Orbital Express design supports both pump and pressure-fed propellant transfer between vehicles.
Fluid coupling engagement, zero-g propellant transfer, and leak-free disconnect will be demonstrated for multiple client system configurations. Astro's robotic arm will also be used to demonstrate component transfer. This will allow client satellites to be reconfigured for new technology insertion or to be repaired. Replaceable components may be located anywhere on the client satellite within the broad reach of the robotic arm, allowing the customer greater flexibility in spacecraft design. The robotic arm has future capability for precision on-orbit assembly and provides flexibility for unplanned and contingency operations, as seen many times on previous shuttle and space station assembly and repair operations. When servicing is complete, the vehicles separate and begin the next demonstration scenario. These on-orbit demonstrations provide the foundation needed to enable operational servicing systems of the future. A revolutionary approach to new space architectures, providing cost-effective, standardized, and autonomous satellite servicing. Orbital Express, leveraging our investments in space. I, I don't know. I don't know what they plan to do about that. I, I would assume that if it's below a certain rate, you might be able to grapple with it. But I don't know if we have any plans to uh, de-spin it. For example, there was a shuttle mission to repair a communication satellite, yeah. and it was spinning quite fast. Mm -hmm. Three of them actually had to grab a hold at the same time. Yeah, um, I think it. Um, I'm not sure. I, I I think it would probably depend on the speed, the relative size of the satellite to the service. It might be possible in certain. Circumstances. Anyone else? Well, perhaps I could ask um, how big is the market for this? Um, I, you know, it's funny. Last ISDC, I actually showed the, the figures of, and I don't remember them. Uh, the military is interested because there's, there's certain types of things they just can't do. So, our, or when we work on military scenarios, there's just certain types of observations and frequencies and repeated overflights over a certain area, the denial and deception kind of thing, that you just can't do uh, without refueling. Um, so we look at it in terms of just new kinds of missions. Commercially, um, I, you know, I knew this, and there's a certain failure rate of, for example, the geostationary satellites and a certain number of satellites um, that, um, have hit the wrong orbit and so on, or that, you know, of the, and the basically I think the geo market is ramping up and is, is more or less leveling off at something like three or four hundred satellites in, in this, I think it's like three hundred satellites in geo. Old ones, we see any like new ones get more, it's more or less leveled off. We know the rate at which components fail. We have a certain predicted frequency of servicing, and it, it turns out to be potentially economical, but I don't know the exact number. Something like 2.7 failures a year comes to mind, but I don't remember. <coughs> right. Well, thank you for coming.